All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the sixth annual 2023 Merrimack High School Film Festival. Uh, and we are sponsored by our lovely friends at Merrimack TV. Um, I see many familiar faces in the audience, but for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Finn Haddad, and I could not be uh, more honored to MC this event. Um, film has always had and will continue to have such an incredible impact on our culture, um, from news to movies and TV shows and even brand new experiences um, that were never before imagined. The last couple of years have really been a paradigm shift for the industry with tools that writers, directors, and cinematographers have had to use, um, allowing for brilliant new scenes that were never thought imaginable. As art is the foundation of our society, it is what sets us apart as humans. Um, please, while watching, be inspired by the creative choices made and the work put into every scene. Every film is a work of art to be questioned and examined. So please do enjoy. Just to let everybody know how we picked the selection for this uh, film festival, um, we had students vote uh, for other students' films, and then we put them into the selection format that you see th today. Um, with that said, I want to say thank you all for coming to the Merrimack High School Film Festival, and it is my privilege to introduce you to the next generation of filmmakers who have worked so hard to have something to present for you here today. I cannot understand how this town is so boring. Really though, like out of all 50 states in the thousand towns, we're shacked up here. I mean, we can always run some ball though. Bet. We got a ball? Yeah. It's at the crib. Word.
Caleb, it's time to go. I'm coming. Did you find your things, Caleb? Uh, one more second. Ugh. No, why? Wait. Okay, guys, make sure you study for the test tomorrow. No! Why? This is the best day ever. I committed arson on a small family of five. You better call Dave. I was arrested for robbing my local convenience store. I deeply regret it. <laughs> Better call Dave! Hi, I'm Dave. Have you been charged with any of these crimes? Then you better call Dave. I'm Dave Matthews and I approve this message. <laughs> Guys, where's Mason? Mason! Mason, Mason, Mason where Mason. are you? Mason. Mason! Guys, let's get our flashlights. Mason! 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 Mason. Mason. Oh, Guys!
Well, I'm really bored today. What's just something we could do? I know what we can do. We can make a Western movie. That's a great idea. Let's do it. Hmm. I think we'll go all in. I'll match you. Reveal your hand. This is outrageous. You cheated, didn't you? I didn't cheat. I won fair and square. No, you didn't. I challenge you to a duel at high noon. I'll be there. What do you need? A bigger gun. This ought to work for anything. This ought to work. didn't have to come to this. You just believe me that I didn't cheat. Yes, I did. I saw the card you threw on the ground. Well, in that case... Don't leave me here. You chugged your fate.
failed the big test in math. Oh no, I wonder what I got. Oh no, me too. We gotta do something about this. Yeah, we do. All right, so the plan is we're gonna walk in this way. We're gonna enter the window here, and we're gonna go that way to the computer. Sounds good. Let's All do right, it. Let's go. Oh no. literally cannot be happening. Breaking news this noon, Tom Brady has announced he is leaving the New England Patriots. This is a big story here in Connecticut and for all of the NFL. Channel 3 Sports Director Joe Zone is here now with how Brady made this announcement and what's next. Joe? Yeah, Kerry Brady, he made that announcement on Twitter, thanking all of his supporters, the incredible fans of New England. He said he will continue his career someplace else. Now, we knew this was possible. Jamie, Tom Brady's leaving the Patriots. And why should I care? Jeez, whatever. Finn, Tom Brady's leaving the Patriots. Who? Tom Brady? Who asked? Damn! I'll just go back to bed. <laughs> Yo, 
Remember when we used to fight as kids? Yeah, bro. We should do that again. All right, let's do it over here then. Damn, you really can't fight like you used to. Nah, you got lucky. I haven't been able to fight since that car crash. Oh, yeah, bro, I died in that car crash. Yeah. Yo, dude, remember that time we got in that car crash? Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> I haven't been able to fight. Okay, bro. <laughs> nah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Ever since that day, I've still not forgotten. Waking up, you're not there. When I'm trying, you're not there. Dude, I'm bored as hell right now. Man, I don't know. What should we do? You know what we should play? Some Yu-Gi-Oh. Nah, I'm good. I'm gonna place a card down, and I'm gonna place a monster. Your turn. I'm flipping a monster and I'm attacking your monster with my trap card, Trap Soul. Reveal my spell card, that immediately gets both of these out of play. <laughs> Dust Storm. What do you think I should do? 
You're right. That's a good move. I'm placing down Dragon and Ego Boost. Your move. Well, that doesn't matter, because guess what? I'm going to use Frog. Felt cute. Might Shield Blast you later. I play Soul Seeker. That leaves me with no cards left. I win. Come on, man. This game does suck a... Why are you looking so sad, man? You're, you're, you're bumming me out here. What What's going on? Dude, I've just been having a really bad day, you know? Like, you know, man, like, I failed my tests, bro. My dog died. My mom has lupus. Like, someone robbed me, bro. Like, I lost my wallet. I looked at my, I looked at my phone and on the app, and it turns out he went to Whole Foods and bought $45 worth of chicken thighs. And on top of that, I just found out the Santa Claus wasn't real. Today's just been the worst, man. Hey, man, that sucks. But guess what? I know the perfect thing. Just wait here. Hey, man, I know you're feeling down, but my best friend, Jaquavius, he's, I mean, he will make anybody happy. He's got to, he's got to make your day better. Okay. Thanks, Nate, but this doesn't change the fact that someone bought $45 worth of chicken thighs at Whole Foods, bro. That's not going to bring back the $45. Hey man, Jaquavius usually makes most people happy, but you know what? I know you're having a really bad day, so let me find something else for you. Hey man, my great-grandfather gave me this one-of-one -one limited edition LeBron James chip tin. I want you to have it. Sponsored by Ruffles. Thanks man, I appreciate that. What should I do with it? Bro, just let all your anger out on it, man. I can't believe my mom has lupus. <laughs> 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 Well, man, did that at least help? Not really, man. You know, this doesn't really bring back my wallet. My mom still has lupus. My dog's still dead. And I just found out I'm constipated. You know what? Food always cheers me up. How about we go down to the kitchen and find something to eat? I brought you my famous Michelin star recipe of oatmeal raisin cookies. That has to cheer you up. No. Man, I'm allergic to shrimp, man. Is there any shrimp in here? No shrimp. Come on, give it a shot. Hopefully this brings my dog back. No, man. I think you're right. These cookies are starting to make my day better, you know? Totally forgot about my mom having lupus. My dog. He wasn't even that good. The wallet thing. It'll be fine. I hope that guy enjoys his chicken thighs. Yo, bro, I'm glad I could help. Come here, man. Thanks, man. <clears throat> really appreciate you. Of course, man. Any anything for you, bro. <laughs> Wait to spend my money on food at 7 Eleven. I spent all night. When's somebody gonna come here so we can rob them? Hey man, you gotta trust me. Someone's gonna show up eventually. Alright, here's the plan. When he misses the next shot, we're gonna grab his wallet and run. <laughs> All right, ready? Three, two, one, go! No!
Do you want some pancakes? Sure, thanks mom, that sounds good, I'm starving. Any plans for today? Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go pick up some friends or something later, if that's all right. Of course, have a good time. Thank you. So what are you guys gonna be doing? I don't know, probably get food or something. Yeah. This is really good, thanks. Hey, I'm on my way, alright? Alright, see you soon. Alright, see you. Alright, bye. Ah! Are you okay? Are you feeling okay? Mom, there was someone in my car, like I saw them in my mirror. I think you need to get some more rest. I'll be back in a few minutes to check on you. Nobody likes you, Mr. Hill. That's why you don't have any friends. Are you okay? Fine. Hey, wait up. What do you want? No. So you were no. just trying to get close to me so you can hear me like everyone else? I will see that from a mile away, so don't even try it. No, I, was, I just saw them bullying you and I was trying to help. Well, I don't need your help. I'm fine on my own. Well, you don't have to be alone anymore. I can be your friend. Can you hear them? No one is my friend and no one will ever be. Well, if you give me the chance, I could change that. You have a week to prove that I can trust you. If you can't after the week, you have to leave me alone. Deal? Deal. What's your name, if I ask? Well, that's John. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself. What's yours? It's Sam. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow, man. Alright. Where do you think you're going, Mr. Girl? What none of your business? But that remark, it is our business. Can you just leave me alone? What do you want? I'll show you that you shouldn't mess with us. Still in the same clothes, are you homeless or something? That'd be funny. Yeah, I'm in so close, you got a problem with that? Nope, you just look homeless. Just leave me alone, will you? What are you doing here? It's just a joke, right? Right. I simply don't care. Where are we going exactly? You'll see. I brought you here for two reasons. And what would those be? Have you seen the news recently or heard anything about it? I have not. Why? Well, there's serial killers on the loose, and they're just not any people. Who are they? They're my parents. I'm adopted. Wait, what?
Hmm, that seems like a good deal. Uh, hello? Kyle, you're late again. I got stuck in a rush hour traffic, Carson. You know how bad it can get around here. Our shift started two hours ago, and I couldn't even start working because somebody took the case files home with them. At least I didn't spill coffee all over the evidence. Hold on, let me take this. Well, Kyle, looks like we're not just doing paperwork today. Let's see how bad the traffic really is. Huh, that is a good deal. Go check that out soon. I agree with you there. Sup, Lieutenant Barry. Hello, detectives. How are you doing today? Doing good? Alright, so, if you're to your right, you will see. most extravagant murder in the world. If you're curious, we do have a witness. They're right over there. Why, hello there. You know who's also over there? Me. I am very busy. I have a lot of work to do, so I'm off. See you. You on body duty? I'm on body duty. What's your name? My name's Willie Pete. I'm just a farmer from the countryside. When I came to the city, I wasn't expecting to see a murder happen with my own eyes. You saw the murder take place? Why, yes I did. I haven't seen a man get killed since the war. Could you describe what happened? Well, I was walking down the street when this one cloaked fella, not to be racist, but it was a black coat anyway, this fella stabs the guy and then ran into the alley. Maybe she knows something. Ma'am, have you been interviewed yet? Huh? Down here. Aren't you a little small to be on the police force? <sighs> Just answer the question, please. I should check the alley. Name? My name's Diane. My mother gave me that name. She named me after the princess. Just answer the question, lady. What the did you see? How rude. If you want to know what I saw, I'll tell you that by the time I come out. All I saw was some cloaked fella hop in their car and speed up. Speed off. Yes! They sped off in that fancy red car. Diane, you're under arrest. For first degree murder. This is preposterous. Prove it. Oh, we will. We'll even tell you how it went down. He wasn't just some random guy. He was your boyfriend. But the relationship didn't go well. How did it? After stabbing him? This fellow stabbed the guy and then ran into the alley. You ran into the alley where you threw out your disguise and murder weapon. 
and when we arrived, you tried to mislead us with your fake alibi. All I saw was some cooked villa, Harvard and Harvard's fear. That's what happened, right? Well, I... Oh, no you don't. Good job, detectives. Another fine day's work. Just an there on the job. But did you really need to punch her so hard? She was a murderer, Carson. Oh, I had geez. to. Oh, jeez. You and your dad are doing good. I'm going to be back in a couple of days. So just make sure you guys have a blast. We will. I love you. Bye. Bye, honey. Dad, what was that? No, no, Dad, please wake up, I need you! Hey, honey, it's time for dinner. I'll eat tomorrow. Today's just not a good day. Al, you need to get up and you need to do stuff. You can't just dwell over your dad. Just stop! You only remind me 24-7. He's gone, there's nothing you can do about it. Do not speak to me like that, young man. Whatever! to drag you down and make you feel hopeless. You can always talk to me. I know you're growing older and you don't think that your feelings matter, but trust me, I'd rather skip work with you than find you dead on the couch.
All right, that concludes our semester one films. Oh, look at that light. Um, <laughs> it's always interesting to see what students are able to come up with over the semester. Um, so every student is able to design a script um, for a 30 second and two to five minute film. These films um, take months and a lot of hard work to produce. So I'm absolutely thrilled to present um, the second semester 30 second film uh, category. I just can't. Everything about her. Ugh. I know, I totally agree. This just makes me so upset. I dread one of the Yeah, I got you. 
Attention everyone in Merrimack School District. There is an unknown entity roaming the streets. We do not know its capabilities yet, but it can look and sound like anything and anyone. Oh, dude, we need to close and lock all the doors and windows. That was a close one, dude. <laughs> I got a delivery for ya. Yeah, and I got something for you. Gun violence? I don't think so. Next! Come on, Coach, we're so out of season. Son, it's not about the game. It's about the player. Holy shit! Swearing is not allowed. Next.
Isn't today just a beautiful day? It's just fantastic. I say after such an exciting film uh, <laughs> definitely I think a contender for the best we've seen so far um, I do want to talk a little bit about the process that students go through um, in making a film. So all the students that you've seen um, have taken Mr. Shaughnessy's uh, videography class. Um, and from the beginning, they've been able to break down the process of creating a movie um, into bite-sized and easily digestible pieces. Um, before we show you the semester two, two to five minute films, I would love to take a moment um, to introduce the judges. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce uh, Isaiah Lambros, um, who you might not be able to see right now because it's so dark, um, but I assure you he's there and he's waving oh there we are <laughs> mr. Labras uses film and absolutely <laughs> mr. Labras uses film and videography to enhance the work that his consulting firm does um, this is mr. Labras's third year at our film festival our next judge is Jan Moyhan Cooney she is a self-described die-hard film fest supporter as well as being an executive producer uh, for, on the What's Up Merrimack team. Uh, Ms. Moyhan Cooney is an integral part of our school district and I could not be more happy to have her with us especially since this is going to be her last year uh, working with the school district so <laughs> then we have David Diarville a, an industry veteran with a lot of experience in the f uh, industry of filmmaking, um, as well as an expert uh, at a lot of filmmaking and editing softwares. Uh, we have Justin Slez. Uh, Mr. Slez has worked uh, for 10 years at, as a media assistant at Merrimack TV. Um, this work is of immense importance to the community, ensuring that citizens of Merrimack have the ability to watch government proceedings no matter where they are, and it allows for family members and friends who might not be able to travel to Merrimack to watch and experience community events like these. And then we have a few more judges. Um, we have Caitlin Morand, uh, who was in my position a couple of years ago. Uh, she is alumni of uh, Merrimack High School, and she is here uh, to present the Film Art Society Alumni Award. And then we have Dakota Barron. Um, he is the founder of No Silence Media, and he is a recent father. So let's give them both a round of applause. <laughs> Now it's time to finish off our films with the second semester two to five minute film category. Morning guys, my day starts right now.
All right, guys, my day starts with a gym, and usually at this time it's absolutely empty. So let's check it out. Yeah, guys, nobody is here this morning. Hey guys, so today I have eight classes and I hope it's gonna be a wonderful school day. All right guys, it's 2 p.m. on the clock and the school is over. So right now I will take a bus and probably go home. After school, I usually have a practice in my soccer club, Seagulls United, but today I don't have one, so I'll probably go to the Westwood and practice on my own. Alright guys, so my practice is over now and I didn't really have a high temp in this practice but it was just a developing of my technical abilities and all this stuff. It's 10 p.m. on the clock and my day finishes right now. I came home after the practice, I had a dinner, I finished my homework, so it's time to go to bed. Bye bye. Each person has many sides, the one they show others, and the ones they don't. Sometimes, they wish they could just remove sides they don't like to form themselves into a better person. But even if you could, what would happen to the other side? Would it just disappear, or turn into something else? There was a study that concluded that one would be able to separate their personalities into two separate halves, essentially making a clone through artificial meiosis in the brain. The operation was only performed once. At the same time, a statement was released by a well-known philosopher that in the coming days, an item would fall from the sky that held a large amount of spirit power, enough to grant a human desire. One month after, there was a break. At the drop site in Old Oak Loop Park, three of the most powerful warriors were sighted, as well as one red-haired figure. So that's why you want me. Well, I heard you were a hunter who desired to terminate evil doers, right? Who better? Here's the deal. We need to make sure my clone doesn't get to the break before we do. Evil. Why won't you face me? Why won't you?
stay back. without fear. You are not evil. Is it okay to kill? To save a life? I'm no philosopher, Elias. <laughs> you fool! My witch was for pain to make me stronger! You can't kill me! there was a better wish than that. So, why? Now you know, there is no going back in the operation. Can I ask why you're so worried? Because I don't want to feel pain anymore. I'm sorry, but I can't let you kill this man. What? You said it yourself. The evil don't feel fear, do that. This one isn't evil. Here's the pain I left again. Now, I realize my mistake. I ran away from myself instead of controlling him. I'm sorry I left you with my pain. If you'll accept me back, we can live together as one, like we're supposed to. I'm sorry, Elias, but my wish is for all evil in this world to perish. You really are no philosopher, are you? We all have evil inside of us. It's our job to live with it and control it, not just to run away from it. Funny, that's what Mother used to say.
everyone, I'm Amelia. And I'm Abrielle. And welcome, welcome to Cakes and Shakes. Today we are baking cupcakes. Today we're making chocolate cupcakes with buttercream frosting. Yeah, because that's what I just said. We're going to start by putting all the dry ingredients in a bowl. First, we're going to add in two cups of flour. Now we're going to add two cups of sugar. Now we're going to add in baking soda and baking powder. Now add half a cup of oil. Avril, why aren't you measuring? Fine, it's just a little bit. Not a big deal. Fine, then a little bit of baking powder won't hurt either. Now time for cocoa. Are you kidding me, Ariel? What is your problem? <laughs> now let's move on to wet ingredients. Ariel, can you pass me an egg from the fridge? Here, catch. Thanks, well now can you get me three eggs from the fridge? Yeah. Now add half a cup of oil. And a cup of milk. <gasps> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Night. Now it's time for the eggs. Only two eggs, though. The other one's for this. Well, let's add some extra flour. And don't forget the cocoa. <laughs> After we add the wet and dry ingredients, we add them to, to our cupcake pan. to even them all out. Now make your frosting, add one cup of butter, and now you mash it together. We're going to melt it a little bit first. Alright, now we're going to add powdered sugar. Instead of adding the whole bag, put in the right amount. Now add your vanilla. Alright, that's enough. After the cupcakes are done and cool off a little bit, we're going to put frosting on them. Okay. Now that you're done frosting your cupcakes, you might have extra, and this is how you get rid of it. <laughs> Now it's time to taste test. Here you go. It's 
pretty good. Thank you for watching Cakes and Shakes. See you next time. Is that something important? Hmm. Why did I run in here for? I think it's for something important. I know it's something important. What was it? Hurry, grab the kit. <sighs> what was now? I know it's for it. Uh, what was it? What was it? Hand me the damn kit. Ah! <gasps> I know. I also got a study for uh, Mrs. Lucky Men's class. Here I go. Probably nothing. Did you turn that assignment in? Oh, okay, that good, good. This is Cooking with Alex. Today I'll be making breakfast for dinner. I'm going to be making eggs, toast, and bacon. The ingredients you need are eggs, two eggs to be exact, butter, two pieces of toast, already cooked bacon if preferred, a mixing bowl, your little spatula, and a pan. First thing you're going to want to do is get your two eggs, two large brown eggs out of the box. I'm going to crack them into the bowl. It's warm. Two. It's okay if a little eggshell gets in there. And then you got throw them away. First thing you're gonna wanna do is get your two eggs, two large brown eggs out of the box. I'm gonna crack them into the bowl. It's warm. Two. It's okay if a little eggshell gets in there. After you beat the eggs, you put it in the bowl, put it in the pan, put it on medium heat. Medium heat, always. And then you let it cook. As you let it cook, you want to mix it around. As you're cooking it, you realize that you don't know how to cook eggs the right way. So then you get in your car and drive the Burger King.
now after you arrive to Burger King, you get the desired dinner that you want to eat tonight. Fries and what else? Diet Coke. Diet Coke, okay, sir. Thank you. Once you get your food, sit back and relax and eat in your car. It was late on a Friday night. After a long week without a single case, all I could think about was getting a bite to eat and some well-deserved shut-eye. Little did I know, my next case would crop up right under my nose. Either the bandit didn't know who they were dealing with, or they have an ego bigger than my massive intellect and thought they could outsmart me. You see, I'm a private eye. It says so on my door. I deal with the lowest of the low on the daily, but I'd never come across someone so crooked as to steal a man's favorite snack. With no strong leads, I had only breadcrumbs to follow. you for? You can start talking and pray I go easy on you. Explain this. I just vacuumed. Ah! The carpet is the least of your worries, pal. There's a bandit on the loose and all clues point to you. Cool it, pal. You think I saw your English muffin? We lived together for years. I'm gluten intolerant. Oh, uh, right. Of course. How can I be so mistaken? I knew I was barking up the wrong tree, but I'm not one to give up that easily. I'm the best in the business, and a minor setback like this won't stop me. No, you're not, and stop narrating yourself. You're not cool. Just when I thought I was out of luck, a new lead came knocking, fresh out of the toaster. I know you're in there. Show yourself immediately, or you'll be toast, pal. What do you want? Listen here, bub. You got to the count of three to tell me why you're not the crook that stole my peanut butter and English muffin from right under my nose. One, two. Okay, first of all, I am not a crook. Second of all, I have a crippling peanut allergy, which you would have remembered if you had taken to the count of three to think about it. <laughs> well, geez, you got a good alibi this time. But don't think you're off the hook just yet. <laughs> Because next time you won't get off so easy. <laughs> As my last lead dried up, I was left clueless and snackless. Well, at least one of those is for certain.
Yo, what's up, Xavier? Uh, no, I'm doing pretty good, man. What's good? Yeah. Yo, my, my mom bought me this bag of cheese. Oh, this is, yeah, this is the last bag in the store. What? You're so lucky. You know I love cheese. its I know. I gotta get those cheese its man. Yo, man, you need someone to watch your bags so no one sees your cheese its Nah, man, I, I should be fine. Alright. Hey, yo, man, let me help you clean up. Oh, for sure. Thanks. Oh, thanks, bro. My cheez -Its. Charles. Charles got him. Charles, what have you done? Why have you stolen the cheez -Its? I have brought peace to my new empire, the cheez -It Empire. You shall join the cheez -It army or be engulfed in cheez -Its. Never. My allegiance is to the Cheetos. I will do what I must. You will try it. What year did this take place? It took place in the summer of 2021. It was only one month, but it was the best one. Well, what are some of the things you did? I did skydiving. I jumped off the stratosphere in Las Vegas. I drove with salt flats and a slingshot. And I also had a TV in the Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon, how are we doing today, Evan? Oh, great. You ready to fall out of this airplane? Yes. Let's do it, brother. Yeah.
Dear Mr. Kim Jong-un, how dare you call my nukes small? I challenge you to a rap battle at 4 p.m. American time. Be there or be square. <laughs> Send. <laughs> I am such a great president protecting my nation. <clears throat> oh, my presidential phone is ringing. Must be important. Hello? Who is this? Well, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. President, but we have a very American issue on our hands. You see, gas price numbers are skyrocketing bigger than your mother. And there's only one way to solve it. If you take a look at the expertise maps I've sent you, you'll see some things that I especially am interested in. <laughs> if you take a look at the map, you'll see that this is the USA, Brazil and Mexico are down here, our fearsome enemies, Russia and China, are somewhere over here, and then we have the oil fields. Oil? Yes, American oil field, that is. There's just one problem. There's another country that owns it, and there's people living there. So, people living there? <sighs> I know just how to fix that. <laughs> That's what we call American style, baby. <laughs> What is it now? Hello? I'm sorry to interrupt you again, Mr. President, but we have a problem outside the White House. People are protesting and angry at you over what you've done. People? Angry at me? But I'm the President of the United States. Don't get me wrong. I think you did the truly American thing. But I think you're going to have to make a speech to make it right. Making a speech, hmm? That's my expertise. My fellow Americans, listen. I know you're upset about the thing I did, but listen to me. Racism is bad. There we go, boom, problem fixed. Da -da 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 all right, see if I can beat my new record of spending a trillion dollars in five minutes. <laughs> my goodness, being a president is so hard. Another phone call. What do you want? Good evening, Mr. President. I'm Mr. Blue Shirt. Don't question how I got your number, but I'm just one of the many veterans you still haven't paid. And we haven't gotten any benefits either. Just real quick, uh, where do you live? I'll make sure I give you all your benefits. Me? Well... I live in Arkansas, of course. One, two, three, Texas Lane. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and just in case I get backlash, I know just what to do. My fellow Americans, I know you're upset about the other thing I did. But listen, we care about our veterans, and war is bad. We also just started another war. It's my second term, I just don't really care anymore. I have a hair in my mouth. <laughs> A new email from Kim Jong-un. Hey there, baby. How are you doing? Hope you're feeling well. But you have no self-control! <laughs> I'm about to prove him wrong! Seven, please come down to the office. Seven, please come down to the office. Thank you. Seven? What's he going to the office for? I, I don't know. He usually never does anything to get in trouble. My friend, 
He said seven was barking in the library. <laughs> oh yeah? I heard he was eating printer paper as well. Or maybe seven. Eight, Eight nine! You <laughs> 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 jerk! Mr. Sweet. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> down the hallway in near Mr. Davis's room. It's over. Let's go. It's time. I could have sworn he was just here.
open wide. <laughs> what the hell, Riggs? Yeah! Hey, man! Don't kill me! Oh, come on! Uh, you were a zombie, and, and you started taking over the whole school. The whole school! And, and you, you just cut the milk. And you, you were chasing people around. You were eating paper. All right, I can't believe you're oh. back. You're yeah, back. and my mother's a movie star. Oh, yeah, what the hell? Listen, man. Professor Laszlo, it's working! I just finished the last one off. We did it! I think yes! Yeah. Excuse me, we are terribly sorry <coughs> for this minor inconvenience. Oh, this chocolate milk tastes like All right, now we'll have a short intermission, uh, about 10 minutes. I'm sure all of you are in the mood for chocolate milk after that. So chocolate milk, water, and pretzels will be available in the lobby uh, for $2. Oh, cookies as well, my apologies. Um, I just ask that you don't bring anything back into the theater, but please do enjoy, uh, and we'll meet back here in 10 minutes. All right, thank you for coming back. Not running away. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed the refreshments. Uh, first, I'd like to bring up Isaiah Lambro, Lambros, sorry, uh, for the Best Performance Award. All right, for Outstanding Performance, uh, it was not an easy choice at all. Uh, we watched, what, 45 videos? Uh, it was very difficult because there were so many that could have won this. Uh, but I chose Aiden Fish in uh, U.S. government. In the next uh, I know, right? Save the best for last. Um, but uh, I, I, just, I just thought that not only did you capture the story with that, uh, but you portrayed it with the sarcasm and <laughs> everything else the way that it should. So there you go. Thank you. Speech. Thank you. Friday FBI. Say, yeah. Yeah. Speech. Say something. All right. I know you're leaving us soon. I just want to say thank you for the support. If there's anyone in the audience that is affiliated with the government, I love the United States. I want to make that clear. Uh, you know, I think video, you know, making videos, acting, and Ross's movies, it's been a wonderful experience uh, working with tons of great filmmakers. Chris, I mean, Muffin Man fit number one film of the year, Oscar winner. <laughs> so uh, I just want to thank everyone. I'm moving on, you know, going to go to college. It's going to be a fun time. Not for acting, sadly. I would, but I got to make a living. So, <laughs> anyways, thank you. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Next, we have Jan Moyahan Cooney presenting the MHS Staff Award. Thank you so much. This really was a difficult choice. There were so many wonderful films, and it really demonstrates the hard work of our MHS students. Um, if you've ever made a film or even just edited a picture, you know the hard work that goes into that. So it's just amazing what these students have put into their productions. This is the sixth time that I have had the honor of judging this event, and every year it gets better, and I have to attribute it to the amazing educator of Mr. Shaughnessy. He is such a skilled <laughs> educator. So it's really been a privilege working with you. So the staff award goes to, I want to make sure I get the name right so I can put my glasses on, um, Cameron Tatum for Hope.
And I really loved this film. Um, it had such a creative videography. Um, the film really um, brought out the emotions that someone would feel if they had lost a loved one. And so I think anyone that um, has ever had that kind of pain could really relate to your film. So you did an amazing job. Thank you. And you get two. Yeah, you, you gotta get up there. <laughs> Thank you, Wesley, for putting up with acting. All right, somebody grab my script, so we're going to have to improv the rest of this. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I know what I'm doing, kind of. Yeah, there we are. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, we have then we have the David D. Arville uh, presenting the Darville Editing Award. So being an editor myself and um, editing some projects, um, you know the important things that I that I always taught was. Um, cut out the boring stuff and always get to the action. So um, this film here did this uh, concisely, quickly. Um, it, it just, it, to me, it, it brought me there. Um, you know, it, it looked like it was edited, edited well and professionally. I could tell it was gone over a couple times because I, I know as an editor myself, you know, I'll do a first pass, a second pass, a third pass, and I see that thing over and over and over again. I can tell that was done with this. Um, and it, what it did, it, it brought the drama out of um, the short film, which was great. So this award goes to, I can't read my writing, um, Ross Corman O'Reilly. Yeah. And that film, of course, is Beneath. Yeah. Good job, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, everyone. I, uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much for the, the honor. Uh, it's, it's been a great pleasure to be making films in Merrimack for the past four years and uh, making films with my key collaborator, Aiden Fish, greatest actor of all time, <laughs> completely deserved that acting award. I, I wouldn't want any other uh, actor to turn to for, for every project. So again, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. All right, what do we got next? We got Caitlin Morand presenting the Film Art Society Alumni Award. Thank you. Um, so I just graduated from Hofstra University with a TV film degree, so uh, I know what good films are. Thanks, thanks. Just, I, I've seen a lot of great films, and I see a lot of great films here tonight. So it's really, uh, really impressive to see what you guys can do here. I myself um, went to Merrimack, so just really awesome to see that you guys keep, you know, pushing each other to make some some cool stuff. It's really awesome to see. And I hope to see you guys in the industry. Maybe hope to see myself in the industry. <laughs> um, so for the outstanding filmmaking, um, the film that I decided to go with um, had really awesome shot selection. They had a really great like story arc, super funny, um, funny performance as well. Um, and that is to Caleb Pham for Oh No, It's Sunday. I don't think he's here, but let's give him a round of applause. That's okay. We'll make sure to congratulate him when we get back to school. All right. Looks like we got one more award uh, before the, the big one. Um, do we have Dakota Barron presenting the Barron Visual St Storytelling Award? Hi, everybody. Uh, first, can we just get a round of applause for Michael and the team here just putting on a great experience year after year? <laughs> So <clears throat> there are many critical components to a good story and to a good film. But I'm a particular fan of cinematography. 
because I think if you can show something extraordinary in a way that seems extremely ordinary, or you can show something supposedly ordinary in a way that leaves your viewer awestruck, you can linger in the hearts and minds of your audience and truly affect perception. I can think of a few other details that go as far to build up the writing, acting, and overall story of a film. Excuse me. <clears throat> and so while there are many films tonight that displayed audio expertise, thoughtful pacing, creative stories, and a host of other filmic qualities, the film I'm awarding is exceptional in its ability to, and creativity in, telling visual stories. I thought this film did a great job of showing that cinematography is more than composition and movement, it's also about color. Excuse me. I thought it did a great job guiding your eye throughout the film, and it used cinematography with intention to support the story. I enjoyed it thoroughly, and I'm pleased to award Christopher Yawn and their film, The Muffin Man, the Baron Visual Tone. <laughs> I am beyond honored to get this award. This is my second time making a film other than my 30 second short. Um, I truly learned a, a whole new skill in this class. Um, I came in like video editing was like an alien language to me and I came out of it with a film I'm really proud of and I'm happy um, to have had this opportunity. Thank you very much. All right, so we've had some wonderful awards, really recognizing some absolutely wonderful films. Um, but before we close out the night, I would like to recognize the man, the myth, the legend, Michael Shaughnessy, uh, who's going to give the Film uh, uh, of the Year Award. Yeah, Film of the Year Award. So. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, I don't have all my things written down. You're right. This is Justin Slez, uh, one of the producers at Merrimack TV, and he is going to give the, thank you, the Merrimack TV Director Award. All right, great. It's great to be seen. Um, I'm Justin Slez, Merrimack TV. I'm the Assistant Media Services Coordinator over there. This is my sixth year doing this. It's one of my favorite things to do every year. Um, these films are always just so enjoyable to watch. It's very exciting to see. Um, just what the kids are up to nowadays. Uh, they're doing great things with this video stuff. Um, I have the honor of giving out the Merrimack TV Director Award. Um, and I feel like this film, uh, when you're the director, you're in charge of basically everything that comes together. And um, this this particular film, it had the editing, the, um, the fil uh, filmography, not filmography, um, the cinematography, and the, uh, the audio, especially um, the sound effects and the way audio is used was absolutely excellent. Um, that's why I am awarding Chris Poisson for Cat Detectives with the Director's Award. And if Chris is here and wants to correct my pronunciation, that'd be great. All right, thank you very much. And congratulations to Chris. Yes, definitely. That was one of the more outstanding films in the way that they were able to use audio um, integrated within to the videography. So we'll definitely have to congratulate Chris at school. And now, I, nobody else wants to present an award. <laughs> we have Michael Shaughnessy. It's always difficult to do this award um, simply because if you go to my classroom, you'll see from our, I think it's our second film festival, I have a whole bunch of tickets, which I have a few extra for this year. I'll probably be able to do the same thing. I made a fan, a Chinese fan, out of, out of all these uh, tickets. And then I put, I'm a fan of your films, of course. <laughs> you know, it's hanging in my room. Um, so, um, but really I am. I'm a fan of their creativity and the time that they spend. Uh, I'm probably the luckiest teacher in the school, I think, because I get to watch students um, create out of their own brain. Uh, it's not something a lot of teachers get to do, I think, because, you know, you've got to get their, all their math scores and you got to get all these things done. And, um, but for me, I, 
I call it a privilege to watch um, students create and what what they're thinking about, what they're uh, dreaming about, et cetera. And um, so when when this student crossed my path, it was actually a few years ago, um, doing a paper towel uh, <laughs> film uh, during the COVID uh, thing when we were doing things uh, remotely. And I, I watched this film and laughed and I said, well, that's fun. I didn't think, I didn't know I was going to be able to have uh, this individual in my class uh, until senior year. And so in walks Ross Corman O'Reilly. And I said, well, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> and I, I meant that fun lovingly. And of course, Aiden Fish joined the party in our eighth period. <laughs> If you would be a fly on the wall in our room when they are actually just being themselves, I, I kid you not, all the other students who are in that class were really lucky and they didn't realize how lucky they were just to watch them interact during class and go off tan tangents, acting and, and creating scripts right off the fly, just right there in front of them on the carpet. It was pretty funny to watch. Needless to say, um, the New Hampshire High School Film Festival, which is a, it's a, an affiliate of the New Hampshire Media Teachers, uh, gave an opportunity for my, our Merrimack High School um, video, video students to create something um, to help uh, tell the, the rules, guidelines for the New Hampshire um, Short Film, High School Short Film Festival. And so Ross and Aiden said, sure, we'll do it. And <laughs> Little did I know that the screening would be born. Um, and I, I, as I watch it, and I've watched it many times now, um, I don't know if you recognize this, but it was, in my opinion, so well done. They didn't even know a couple of the nuances that they produced, like <laughs> when he's critiquing the film and the person who has the snowblower is engaging the film um, the person who is judging, which is Aiden's character, um, is engaging with the person on the screen, and they didn't realize that that's actually what happened. Like he's like, "Huh, you're you're gonna you're gonna judge a good film? Nah, -uh, not this time." Like it was so crazy funny. I, I and I told Ross, "Did you realize that's what happened?" He's like, "I didn't really plan that, but it was so well put together that I just I'm sorry, judges, I had to." <laughs> I had to steal, I'm sure, a couple of people's thunder because they wanted to give that one away. But the film of the year for 2022-2023 is the screening. Ross Gorman O'Reilly, thank you for that. <laughs> and lastly, because I'm going to let Ross have the, the good night and say good night to everybody after your speech. Or, or unless you want to. No, no. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to thank you for coming. And if you would like to get involved in the future, you just email me or call me or whatever. And um, there's obviously things that we could improve on and, and we would like to grow too. So um, just let me know. Thank you again for coming. And Ross. <laughs> Hello again, everyone. Uh, it is my it is a real pleasure to be accepting this award. Um, as someone who's kind of poured the last four years, five years, I think, actually, of my life into filmmaking, it was just incredibly gratifying to see my work finally up on the big screen and be recognized like this. And of course, I've got to say, Aiden, I mean, what a guy. What a, I mean, you, <laughs> I mean, you just look at him, and he's just, he's just incredible. <laughs> I mean, could you, Aiden, could you please stand and be recognized for your performance? <laughs> Without Aiden, none of this, this film could not be possible. It could not, please sit down. Please sit down. <laughs> it could not have been made. Uh, and, and for that, I'm grateful. And Aiden, we co-wrote it. It was a ton of fun. And... Uh, that's all I really have to say other than thank you to all the judges, everyone that came out to support us. And now, Finn, if you'd like to join me, and we can both say together. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever you're ready. Good, Good night. night. <laughs>